This is community activist Derek Muhammad, and you are watching Willie D Live. Trey Day, incredible event. Yes. Shouts out to Trey the Truth. Man, I'm going to tell you, man, we got some good people out here in Houston. We yes, got some we good dudes in Houston, man, that's really doing some things, that's really in the streets and really out there giving back, helping. Right. You know, li lending their resources, whether it be the sweat, their name, sweat equity, or their money. Mm -hmm. We got some good dudes in Houston. And it just made me feel so good to see so many, up, many more dudes like come together as one and say, man, I support this movement. And to see guys from out of town come out here. Right. Now, I saw, I saw you know, DJ Envy and Ace Hood right. and, Nick and Cannon, Raheem and Levon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it was beautiful, yeah. man. It they was, came from all over the country to participate in Trade Day. And again, much respect to my brother Trey the Truth. But let me say this. A lot of people were coming at me after we had the meeting with the mayor saying, can you get these rappers to stop promoting violence in their lyrics? Or they were saying things like, oh, that's good that they met with the mayor, but what about this, what about that? And I start thinking about the archaic mentality that our community has about rap music. First and foremost, I looked around that table and I saw so much growth and development. It was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, everybody at this table, and you had all your major artists, rap, major rap artists from Houston, Everybody at this table is already doing something to help the community. They each had a track record. The only thing that we did, which was the most powerful thing that could be done, is that we brought it all together and we witnessed the power of it. Mm -hmm. But things that Willie D rapped about 25, 30 years ago, he's still talking about similar circumstances, but he's on a different note. And it's more responsible. Thank you. That's the, that's <laughs> the biggest that's the Willie biggest D difference. is coon, he coon hunting. Right. He coon I hunting see. right now. Right. You see, Slim Thug, he just put out a motivational song, uh, Church, I think is what it's called. Yeah. Right. So um, everybody, Lil Kiki, he just got an award from President Obama for his community work. Mm -hmm. We talked about Trade the Truth and the work that he's doing. Um, Zero, I looked at, I was looking at some of the interviews that Zero did in New York City a couple weeks ago. I mean, fire, very activist minded, sharp brother. So a lot of times our community is still judging artists who are growing and developing mentally and spiritually by music that they may have made 20 years ago. But, but you know what, Derek, a lot of these people that do that, they doing the same thing with their spouses. They doing the same thing with their parents, their children, their friends. Well, you know, back in 63, you hurt me. You really hurt me. You know, these, right. these, these are people that just can't let it go. And, and it's right. interesting that you brought up the fact that people don't want you to grow and they don't want to recognize the growth. Right. I've heard people say, well, well, you know, just talk about this music that you made and you know, where you just, you, you contributed to destroying the youth and blah, blah, blah. Let me, let me explain something to you, dumbass. If you go back and listen to any music I got, listen to the music, all the music, I don't care what I'm talking about. It's a cautionary tale. Oh. I, I never glorified the street life. I, 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 was, I, I was a reporter for the street life. I, I reported what was going on in the streets. But I, w I never glorified it because anytime I talked about anything, I, I always talked about the situation, circumstances, repercussions. Hmm. It's always repercussions. You never got off with just being reckless. I, 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 that's reckless to me. To hmm. just go out there and say, I got to chop in, chop, chop in, chop, and that's all I got. But you got a chop in the trunk, your ass finna get 15 years. So you gonna talk about that chopping. So if, if you gonna talk about that chopping in the trunk, talk about them 15 yes, years you, you gonna, gonna get, get. If you get caught, with, you that get caught with that chopper. in that trunk. See that's, that's, see, that's the difference between GB and a lot of other people that make music. Right. I don't. It's, 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 no, it's no responsibility component with the music. I don't think it's so much as people not wanting to see you evolve. I think it's kind of a 
first impression thing. If the first time I heard these rappers, they're talking about slapping hoes and killing niggas, all of a sudden they're activists. It's it's not like, okay, you can't progress to be an activist, but I'm still going to remember when you were talking about slapping hoes and killing people. So I don't, just speaking on a different point of view, I don't think it's that they don't want to see progress because I genuinely think as a black race, people want to see us get further. Okay. I think it's just, it's a little hard for people to separate that dope dealer who now wants to be an activist. Well, that's, 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 that's fine, but here's the thing. Though, all I want, all, and you're right, that's, that's very fair to say that. But here's the thing. The same people that want people to respect their growth, mm-hmm. they don't want to respect the next person's growth. Right. You know, it's like, well, I, I'm not the same person. I mean, think right. about think about many of our grandmamas, and I hate to put this out there for you, for your grandmama before you start thinking no, like this about your grandma. Don't put that image in my mind. But you know, many of our grandmamas was freaks. All right, let's put <laughs> it out there. Many of our grandmamas was freaks. They was in the club. They was out there doing their thing. But it was encouraged. Dro- they it was, was encouraged dropping, the by the rappers. They it was, was dropping it to the floor. We talking about before rap. Some of our grandmamas who was before rap. They was out there dropping it to the floor and doing, you know what I'm saying? And now grandmama is all reserved and refined and she's seen it all. And, you know, she's it's one man, you know, every 15 years. Oh, and, it's, and, that, and, you know, oh, it's that same man in her life that's been there for the last 30 years. That's the grandmama that you see now. So, so it's, it, when grandma, you see grandmama, well, what if you were with your grandmama and y'all walking through Kroger's or any type of uh, restaurant or something and somebody walk up, girl, hmm. I remember you when hmm. you hmm. was just out there. Ooh, girl, your grandmama was like, oh. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on now. It's different because I wasn't around when that was going on. I'm around when these rappers are acting a fool and then want to be activists. I wasn't there, so that emotion is going to be different. But see, what you, what you, I, I, I what you, let me, let me say something. Yeah. And I, you make a very good point, but that's the, that's the education or the educational process that our community has to go through. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? I see it completely differently. At the beginning of the interview, Will was, Will was talking about who I was before I became an activist. Now, he wasn't talking about what I was rapping about. He was talking about what I was actually out there doing. Mm -hmm. So many of us are hypocritical because we all got skeletons in in the closet. Yeah, absolutely. You understand what I'm saying? The only difference between the rapper is that his is public. Mine is a little bit more private. But what we have to do is we got to begin to develop the same patience with one another that we have with people from other communities. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, oh boy, do we have a lot of patience for people wait, from wait, other wait, communities. Wait, 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 exactly, oh, it's going to exactly, take time. Exactly. It's going to exactly, take time. Exactly. Justin Bieber can become a preacher tomorrow. Well, hey, I don't if, know about that. That's, no, 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 that's no. the push. Hey, if they put the right That's the narrative. No, listen, listen. No, listen. They're going to put the narrative out there. If they put the right spin exactly. on it and they put the right resources behind the propaganda, Bruce you gonna Jenner. be saying oh, you gonna be saying amen? Bruce Jenner, Bruce Jenner went out there and changed his sexuality, and, that, and now everybody co- talking about him. Now him is a her. Well, you know she and she. I ain't never saying she. I don't care what y'all say. That's a damn man. Right. That is a man who went out there and got a sex change. Oh, I don't know. It a, ended up being woman of and the year. It's ended up being woman now, of I the year. Now I don't agree with that. That's a damn man, I don't and agree I'm a, with I, that. I ain't gonna. I'm never gonna say she. That's a man. You're not going to get my head mixed up. But you say, your your mama call you Bruce, I'm going to call you Bruce. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, the thing is that you can change your name. I mean, people change their names all the time. I mean, Prince changed his name to a symbol. You know, I ain't know what the hell to call him. I just like... But but if we're in a new age of black consciousness, then... We, we have to realize that what's happening today and tomorrow is always more important than what took place on yesterday. Mm-hmm. But even, Talk to me. But even, but even if you listen to Ghetto Boys music, if you listen to Willie D's first album, I was a huge Willie D fan back when he was a battle rapper. Like, he used to battle rap back in front, in front of Gucci's. He didn't know me. I knew him. Everybody knew him. <laughs> but his first solo album, he had a picture of the Ku Klux Klan mm-hmm. on it. On, on it. He had a, I think he, I don't know, he had a pump, a shotgun or something in his hand. I don't uh, remember. No, it was a, it was a picture. But, of, yeah. But but his first album helped me to become politically conscious. 
He was giving it to me in a way that I could understand because I was from Fifth Ward too. Mm -hmm. So it just depends. You can reach back and you can say, and you can focus on the song he, he made called Ball Head Hoes, or you can grasp some of the other, you know, politically charged music that he made way actually had a message in it. It just depends on what part you want to settle on as an individual. Talk to me, man. You see what I'm saying? So, so the narrative, Talk to me. the narrative about our rap artists has been given to us by the white media, and who we, is a PR agent for the and government. And we bought it, and we've bought it hook, line, and sinker. Number one. Number two. If you don't know Willie D, Slim Thug, if you don't know him personally, you have to realize that you're judging somebody that you do not know. I mean, but that happens every day, all day. Yeah, exactly. but it's based on what you put out. People sometimes forget. I think the rappers are getting more conscious of that. Who you deliver, that's your brand. People are not going to say, oh, well, maybe he's a good person at heart. Or, you know, if you're going on here talking about doing this and this and this, especially with the younger you, they're not thinking, okay, that's not really him. They really believe but, but, that but, that's but, really but, him. But check this out. Check this out. Let's say every rapper at the table... All they've, all, all they've made was music about shoot them up, bang, bang, which is not true. Let's say that were the case. Okay. But on that particular day, they decided that they were going to come together <laughs> and do something positive. Should we focus on the positive that they decided to do that day and encourage them to do more the following day? Or should we look at yeah, it as No, me. I'm all yeah, with encouraging, and me. I believe that's what people should do, but that's not what they're going to do. Well, a lot of people did do it. Yeah. But we're just talking about really like the minority that didn't. But I will that are say. That like, oh, he's fake. He's a sellout. He's this. It's like you can't really win. You can't please everybody. Well, so well, there's no winning. Well, when you're a public figure, Willie D knows, that comes <laughs> with the territory yeah. anyway. So they're not bothered by it. But, but, but as a community, my whole thing is it's not just rappers. There are a lot of people who are coming to consciousness in this day and age. What do we do? Look at him and say, oh, you was on the stripper pole last week. You know, now you want to talk to me about being a more. You want to talk to me about you. The no, you don't put people down for who they were yesterday or what yeah. they did yesterday. You encourage them to move forward. Yeah, it's, it's the difference if somebody was flip flopping. You know, if you're flip flopping, then it's like, I mean, I don't know which way this dude. I don't know what you thinking tomorrow. I don't know how you're going to be today. And da, 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 da. But I'm, I'm but, but I'm going to put this out here for y'all. I'm I, I am very much the same person that I was 20, year ago, 20 years ago in terms of wanting to better myself. See, that's what people don't understand about me. I've always tried to become a better version of myself daily. Now, some of you guys who have seen me at my worst points and have seen me out there doing certain reckless things or whatever, Hey, you caught me on a bad day, man. You caught me in transition. <laughs> you caught me in transition. In it's transition. like you're it's, it's still working on me. Right. Still working on me, but, but, but and, and, and I'm going to tell you this, it's one thing that I do have left over is if somebody does something to me to try to harm me <laughs> or somebody does something to disrespect me, be disrespectful, mm -hmm. I, it, what's that, uh, uh, what, what does uh, D.C. Young, uh, D.C. Young Fly say? Bring that ass to me, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Got to bring that ass well, to me, boy. Malcolm X said something similar. He said, harm no one, always be the peacemaker. But if somebody puts their hands on you, send them to the cemetery. But exactly. see, that, okay, when you guys say that and then you get mad when people bring up black on black crime when uh, certain that, that, things happen. Black but on, first but of all, you're saying, first of all, if you do this, I'm going to put my hands on you. But yeah, then you get mad when people you, acknowledge but here's, that. But here's the thing, here's the thing. It's okay if they acknowledge it, but here's the thing. It ain't going to change cause, because that right there is a defense mechanism that people use to keep you off their ass. You see what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. people think that you can, that they can say anything that they want to say to you or do anything that you want to do. I'm not a kumbaya dude. In the, in the <laughs> beginning, let me tell you something. I, I would like that for there to be peace, but if we can't, we can't, if it can't be peace, well, goddamn, I ain't the one gonna be hiding and still pleading and, pray, and praying and stuff. I'm gonna say, let's get it on. If we, I, I'm saying, hey, let, let it be peace. Mm -hmm. Let that be peace. Right. But if it can't be peace, well, goddamn, get it on. Right. It's, it's like. It's like a, like some of these reality shows. If I was to be on a reality show, I, you know, I'm not going to engage in going crazy, blowing up, and all that kind of stuff, arguing stuff, because I'm not, I'm not really good. I'm not really good with 
intense arguing. I'm not really good with that. So I, I prefer to just stay, step back and stay out of it, you know, because I don't know where I'm going to go. I don't know. I, I would like to think that I ain't going to flip. But I don't know when that, I don't know when it's going to happen. So I just rather stay away from it. But, yeah. but people will push your button. And if people know that they can be disrespectful to you and, that's not, and you're not going to do anything because you're so wrapped up in peace and harmony and love and you're not going to do anything and you, you're going to do everything that you can do to make sure nobody try to identify you as the guy that's committing black on black crime, they are going to try you, they're yeah. going to push you, they're going to fuck with not only you, they, they may try your, right. your family members. They may, try, they may try your family members. They may try your, 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 your business partner or whoever. People cannot have, you cannot give people a blank check to act an ass. Right. What, what Will and I were talking about was self-defense. Mm -hmm. And when we were talking about it, I, was, I had nobody black in my mind. I didn't have anybody exactly. black in mind. So take it. I wasn't even thinking black on black, when I, but I, when I'm thinking. I'm speaking for the, the outside. I get exactly what you're saying, but the questions I'm asking and the stuff I'm throwing is stuff that I know people think, the stuff I read, gotcha. and I'm like, where do you get this from? But I'm being them today, yeah. so don't, we appreciate you. don't, the thing, the thing don't is, look at though, me crazy and be like, this girl's throat off. But the, the, thing, the, thing, the thing is, Danny. But we're just talking about self-defense. Danny, the thing is this. A lot of people are not critical thinkers, so they just only think on the surface. Mm -hmm. So they say silly shit like, well, what about black on black crime? What da -da 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 -da. This basically re regurgitating the same old white supremacist talking points and stuff. Mm -hmm. right. You know, so <laughs> the thing about it is that who put this narrative out there? You know who put it out there? White media. White media, who is the PR agent for the government, the, gov the same gov government who targets black people on a regular for failure. Mm -hmm. It's the same, it's, these are all the same people. So, they say, what about, black, what about black on black crime anytime an injustice happens against black people? And they, use, they throw that out there to use it as a defense mechanism right. so, and, and so that they can have an excuse to do the same thing right. and get away with it. Right. And it's the, That's all it is. It's, it's the most asinine defense mechanism that I've ever heard. Because as a people, we've been in this country for 461 years. Black-on-black black murder is a recent thing. Maybe the past 30, 40 years, it had become a serious problem. But back in the 40s, 50s, 30s, the 20s. It was a, a 20s, major issue. No, it wasn't a major. We, we weren't killing one another like that. But they were still killing us then mm -hmm. the way they're killing us now. Mm -hmm. So how can you say that if we stop black on black violence, that the police will stop shooting us down. The the medical industry will stop targeting us and, and killing us. I don't think it's like that they're saying it to get you to think yes, that the no, cops they're, are going to they're, say, they're saying it to justify their killing us, number one. Right. Well, yeah. I number two, that. they're also saying it to diffuse the argument. Like to weigh it out. Right. Kind of like, well, if you're doing if this, why stop this killing, okay? If y'all stop killing one another, then maybe we'll stop killing you. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> How long have you all been killing us? Yeah. So, no, nah, that has nothing to do with it. Minister Farrakhan calls it a two-front war. That means you, we do have a problem with inner-city violence that is deeply rooted in self-hatred lack of opportunity mm -hmm. and a myriad of other factors that's over here but over here we have a justice issue because the week before last i i sat in the capital murder case four boys black killed a young black male for his air Jordans. well actually they I, didn't even get the I saw that. you saw that mm -hmm. right okay two of them got life sentences one of them just played to 40 years all right the other one's gonna plead to all of them will spend Either the rest of their life in prison or an inordinate amount of time in prison. Okay, but but the jury is still out on those two cops that kill Alton Sterling in Baton Rouge. That's the difference. The difference is there's a justice gap. When we kill one another, we go to jail. We overpay the price if that is a such thing. But when they kill us, they still get away with it. Let's talk about that. And that's the standard difference. When we come yeah. back, checking out Willie D live. Bye.